landlords, two million and counting. Yet for a few, the buy-to-let dream leads to financial ruin. We can't afford to pay two mortgages. I don't understand. Yes, you do understand. You're supposed to vacate the property yesterday. In this series, we follow the experts whose job it is to evict nightmare tenants. You name it, scam-wise, we've seen it. Excuse me. Excuse me. I think that could be our tenant. And the heroes who take slum landlords down. You can't cut their electrics and urinate on their furniture. Provide habitable properties for other human beings. Jesus. Get off. Renting out a second property can seem like an easy way to make a bit of extra cash. But amateur landlords beware. There's a new breed of savvy renters who know how to play the system and financially can bring a first-time landlord to their knees. In Hemel Hempstead, Terry Sartin, a bus driver and first-time landlord, is on his way to the house he's rented out for the last year. His tenant has barely paid a penny in rent for over eight months, and now, with legal fees, owes him almost £8,000. There's no cars. She's not there. Definitely not there. He's been trying to get his tenant out of his house for over six months, but today's the day she's finally being evicted. The locksmith and High Court enforcement officer arrive. You let me have the key. Okay. Right, you stay back for a minute. Good or not. This has been going on now for seven months, really. She owes me just over eight thousand pounds. We've been getting to the stage where I, I wouldn't be able to keep paying the mortgage. A little bit nervous as to what I'm going to find once I get myself through the front door. Right, so I went in there. Uh, but there's still stuff in there. Yeah. Thanks a lot. OK. Bye. This used to be Terry's home until he moved in with his partner 18 months ago. Although it's now legally back in his hands, his nightmare isn't over yet. Terry knows by law he has to allow his tenant, Sophia, to collect her belongings. Uh, Sophia, um, you're being ev evicted this morning. No, 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 you're being evicted now. I, I've got... Uh, I, I've, everything is in, in order, I've done everything by the book. I, I'm, Sophia, I'm giving you the opportun opportunity now to come back and get whatever you need. Well, OK, you, you get in touch with the courts. OK, that's it. All right, OK, Sophia, all right, bye. Oh, she's hung up anyway. I'm going in. £8,000 down and after months of anguish, at least Terry can now finally enter his own house. Everything is just messy. You can see some nasty stains on the walls. It's all here as well. It looks like tea. I don't know. That's all broken. And we have a drawer missing. This is the back gate. It's frustrating that the house is full of her, her belongings. I was hoping that it was going to be empty. Um, it's now down to me to box it all up and arrange a, a time and date for her to come and collect it. Terry is following the letter of the law, but his tenant Sophia knows her rights and isn't going quietly. Oh, I have a message from Sophia. No documentation has been made via the courts instructing me of a date to move out of the property. So therefore, I have no alternative to go to the courts this afternoon. I get the gist of it. I think she's going to come back here expecting to be able to get in. She will see notices on the window. Whether she will take any notice of that or not, I don't know. Whether she will attempt to break in, I don't know. If she does, then I will call the police and she will be presumably arrested for breaking and entering. Locks are done. Just as Terry is about to leave, the tenant Sophia arrives. 
Terry knows he has to allow her to collect her belongings in perfect condition. But after all he's been through, allowing her back in the property is the last thing he wants to do. Why are you putting the camera in your face? Why not? Because you're not safe. So you can put it inside that house. You have a problem. Yeah, cool. Yeah, quite nice. Um, all I can say, sir, dear, we will have to come to an arrangement for you to come and collect all your belongings. I'm not going to damage or steal anything. There's stuff in there that relates to my mum as well, so can you take that camera out? My phone's been If, um, I presume these two guys are with her. Are you with Sophia? Unfortunately, lads, it's not going to happen today. She's here with a van. Desperate for help. Terry calls his partner Tracy, who's at work miles from the property. But Tracy, I can't do it all on my own. I've got to take a bed apart. If I'm up in the bedroom, I need somebody to stop her coming in the house. I definitely need help. Should we try and do it now? OK. Yeah, yeah, all right, tell you what, I'm going to have a quick with Sophia. Right, just a second, Sophia. I'm on the phone to the police now, cos I've been told to call them. You are not stepping foot inside my house. OK, so I will be taking your bed apart and things like that. All your personal possessions, I will be handling them. It's not raining, okay. nothing will get wet. Are you prepared to do that? OK. It's up to you. So do you want to do it now? So you're saying you're going to take down my bed and put them in the van? Yes. I'm not going to put it in the van, you are. But I... I, I can't go in there? No, no, you're not. You can't. I will bring it out. But if you want to get the police here, fine. You have no right to, cro to go in that no, house. No, I've been told that I have to phone the police when I get down here. That's OK, well, let them come then. Are you OK to wait? Can you tell it could, that guy it could... to take that camera? Because at the end of the day, I work in film, right? And I know that... Do you? you? Yes, I do. You're right? earning good money? Listen, well, why didn't you pay your listen, rent? Listen, he's got to I feel happier. Should I lock this? Desperate to not allow her back in, Terry, his partner Tracy, and her mum, 72-year-old Margaret, remove all her belongings and put them outside. Oh, I'll come and help decorate as well, Terry. Don't you go knocking my walls? I don't think I can do much more damage than they've already done it. Quite a sharp end there. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The house is empty. All done. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Bye. 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 Hope we don't have to get involved like this again. <laughs> One hour later, the tenant's possessions are off to a new home. Although Terry is owed over £8,000, the tenant is finally gone. Really pleased to finally get the house back. Um, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, I might, I might just uh, pop down the pub for a quick pint and then have an early night. Yeah. On Britain's streets, conflicts between private landlords and tenants are at an all-time high. With generation rent growing, a new band of rogue tenants has emerged who make their landlords' lives a misery. Leslie and her husband bought their four-bedroom terrace in 2003 as an investment, hoping to rent it out to cover their mortgage. That was the plan, but instead they've been saddled with a tenant who hasn't paid any rent for the past three months, owing three and a half thousand pounds. I just thought she was generally a bit sort of hard up, had a bit of a cash flow problem. Leslie has called an eviction pro Paul Champlina. Today, they're serving an eviction notice on her nightmare tenant. We took her in out of the goodness of our heart, and she's just carried on doing this, and she's going to cause me an awful lot of problems. We've got the mortgage to pay, and we're not getting any rent coming in at all. So, you know, it is going to be quite a financial hardship for us. Um, if, she, if she digs her heels in and refuses to go. Hi, Leslie. 
Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Paul. I'm Cold fine, thank you. And you? Cold and wet morning. <laughs> Cold and wet morning. OK, are we ready for this? We are, yes. OK, yes. all right. So, well, should we go and serve this? Yes. Uh, and, uh, yes. and wake her up? <laughs> OK. <clears throat> so, Leslie, I'll, I'll knock on the door. Hopefully, she'll answer. All right, you're just even talking to me. Their light's on. This is it here. This is it here, yes. Paul and Leslie have turned up early in the hope of catching the tenant in. We can try the bell, but I think we'll have to. What does she look like? She's quite short. Yeah. Quite dark skinned, black hair. Okay. Is she looking at the window? I just saw a shadow move. Should give it another. Yeah. Shall I ring her? You can ring her. See if it does any good. Yeah, they're in. I, I saw the curtain move. They've obviously seen us out the window. Oh, hello. It's Leslie here. Um, we're outside. Could you please come down like a little word with you? Do you mind? Well, we just, we just need to talk to you. Could you just come down? We expect you down in a sec, yeah? Minutes pass and there's no sign of her. She's not going to come down. No. She's, she's bottled it. Yeah. Uh, there's no way. We could, we'll be here till next week and she won't come down, I promise you. No. Right, so what I'm going to do, all right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to serve the notice. Yeah. She's been served, all right? She's panicking. She's totally panicking. <sighs> now, get her on the phone. Get her on the mm. phone. I'll speak to her. Right. It's engaged. Oh. She doesn't want to take any calls from you. She's turned it off. She's turned it off. Yeah, OK. okay. She got spooked, so she's not there. Uh, the, you can see the lights on up there. Uh, I saw some shadows. We've tried to call We've her. We've spoken to her on you the know, phone. She's definitely there. spoken to her. She won't come downstairs. I've just tried to call her. The phone was on constant engage. I am angry. I've obviously never had to evict a tenant before in all my life. It's been quite stressful, this situation, yes. That's the main bedroom, which okay. I assume she should be in. In Hemel Hempstead, landlord Terry Sartin is beginning to clean up his home after evicting his tenant. Part of the bedroom blind, I think, in the garden. Although he's now rid of her, Terry has found out she's been causing problems for another landlord in the area. I, I've been told on good authority that she, she actually uh, signed a, a tenancy agreement, another one, in December, uh, and she hasn't paid any rent on that either. It turns out his tenant, Sophia, has been renting a second property, just a few miles away, while still living in Terry's house. I was put in touch with Terry Sartin. She was holding the lease to his house and my flat, paying not a penny on either of them. That's the block there. Mother of two, Helen Miller, started renting out her flat to Sophia five months ago, after living there herself for over five years. But except for the first month's rent, she's barely received a penny from her since. I can genuinely say the first three months of this year um, have been the most stressful I've ever been through. Two small children, um, just gone back to work after having a baby and I live in Bristol and the flat's in Hemel Hempstead so having to deal with everything that was going on here while still looking after the children and doing my job um, it's, been, it's been really, really tough. Now owed almost £2,500 and desperate to get Sophia out Helen's called an eviction specialist Paul Champlina. We are now on our way to try and catch up with a serial bad tenant who is not paying a rent and has been previously evicted from another property. Serial bad tenants are the worst type of tenants to get for a landlord. Paul is serving a letter personally to the tenant, informing her of the possession hearing date. 
He wants to make sure she can't claim she didn't know about the court case, which would potentially prolong the eviction process. Hi, uh, we're the legal representatives for uh, Helen, who owns number eight. Thank you very much. Paul has arrived early to catch Sophia in before she goes to work. Hi, Helen. She did not answer the door. I got in through the neighbour, so we're just waiting out at the moment to hope that she goes to work. Right. Her car's here. Brilliant. OK. My gut feeling is that she is in there, Paul. Yeah, my gut um, feeling is as well. She takes her car. Yeah. Mm. So we'll wait it out and we'll let you know uh, how we get on, all right? Brilliant. OK. Is that her? Is that her? I think that's her. She's going to go to her car. Hi, Sophia. Hi. I've got to give you this from Helen. It's notification of the hearing date. Yeah. Yeah? Do you want to take it? Yeah, just pop it. Yeah. Well, but the, the problem we've got... Is... Can you just take that thing out of Well, no, way? because well, the, re the reason why we're here is that, obviously, you've previously been evicted from another property, and Helen's worried that you're a serial bad tenant living in her property. That's the problem. She's got rent arrears. Cause enough... You can call the police, it doesn't really matter. I'm just serving a notice. I'm not harassing you. Here's a letter, there's a notification of the hearing date. I'll leave it with you, OK? OK? So you know when the hearing date is. <coughs> uh, number eight. There we go. I'll put that in there. She knows about the hearing date. She wasn't happy that we, uh, we served a letter on her, a notification of the hearing date. And the whole point of this, this is about pressure. So she leaves sooner rather than later. She sticks it out for another four or five months and then loses much more money. Hi, Paul. Helen, well, we just served her. Good news. Now it's a waiting game. You know, there could be a good chance she's going to try and put a defence in for whatever reason to try yeah. and string it out. We know that. But we're going to make sure we put all our ducks in order so that uh, we get the court order for you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Helen's nightmare is far from over, as she now has to try and win possession of her home back through the courts. <laughs> Leslie Irwing and her husband Mark have a nightmare tenant on their hands. Is that nice, Dinny's? She's four months in arrears and now owes them over £5,000 in rent. Leslie recently served her tenant with a legal notice demanding she pay the rent. And it seems to have done the trick. Mm. Can I uh, bank it in on Wednesday? Are you going to bank all of it in, um, in yeah. one go? Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Are you sure this is going to happen on Wednesday? Um, you yes, can, you can do it. I'm trying, yeah. I will uh, look forward to that. OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Are you expecting to see that money in your bank account? No. I think Wednesday's your phone with another excuse. <laughs> yes, Leslie, I was going to call you um, this afternoon. Yeah. Can I do it first thing tomorrow? So, what? please don't check today, you can check tomorrow. With no sign of the promised rent, Leslie is starting to despair of ever seeing the money she's owed. Hello? But a phone call from the police out of the blue changes everything. Oh, right. God. Oh, right. Yeah. So you're actually keeping her in a cell or blimey. Well, at least she can't do this again. God. Right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Good heavens. They've actually locked her up. Can't believe it. <laughs> Wonderful. It turns out Leslie hasn't just been dealing with a difficult tenant, but a con artist who's been using the Irwings' property for an elaborate scam. She's been promising to let rooms to students, 
taking their money and then reneging on the deal. She has scammed, probably, from what I understand, about a dozen people. Well, it is very frustrating to think that we've been really conned by this woman. I just don't know how she's managed to get away conning so many people, um, you know, for so long, really. The tenant scam has come as a shock, but on the upside, because she's been arrested, they've got their property back. Today, the Irwings are checking their property for the first time since the tenant left. No idea who he is. First, they need to change the locks and give it a thorough clean. Ooh. I think there's ten grand in here. Going through the paperwork, the Irwings discover the extent of the double life their tenant has been living. I think that's another name she's been... I think it's another name she goes under, yeah. Another address. She must have been in every flipping house in Hatfield. Oh, God, that's rubbish, isn't it? Oh, this, in fact, this dates back to July 2011. Paid him £200 in six months. <gasps> I mean, she's mad. Trophies of previous victims. Just when it looks like the Irwings nightmare is over, they get one final surprise. Oh. So what end? Uh, I've got a house viewing, moving in this house. Uh, have you? Yeah. That's very interesting. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, yes, would you this student is another one of their former tenant scam victims. We, we're the landlord. Oh, okay. So the oh, woman that you're bit, speaking you're to... You're very lucky. Did you, has she paid you, have you paid any money out? Yeah, I've given her the deposit. Oh, oh well, you're God stuffed on that, and you won't get that back. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> Basically, she's been conning people. You yeah. were a last scam then. <laughs> In that case, <laughs> it's not funny, is it? <laughs> it's not at all, because I had to travel two and a half hours to get oh, here, because I start uni tomorrow. Oh, my God. You've got nowhere to go. Nightmare. Sorry Completely for... gobsmacked, right. actually, that, that she's that still, she's doing, still it doing it, day. even up to the day that she's been arrested and taken to prison. I mean, what is the woman on? Now they're finally rid of their nightmare tenant, the Irwings have decided to cut their losses and sell the property. For the first time in a generation, more people rent privately from landlords than from councils or housing associations. And that means conflicts between landlords and tenants are soaring. Ben Reeve Lewis from Lewisham Council's Rogue Landlord Unit is tasked with helping vulnerable tenants who run foul of slum landlords. I read a definition of success that I quite like. And success is that when you die, is to know that at least one other person breathed a little bit easier because you lived, which I quite like. And I think my job is helping people breathe a bit easier. And I've got quite a few of them. So when I finally do pop off, I'm not planning to go anywhere, but when I do, I'm going to just point to the book and go, have a look at that, mate. Yeah? I'll be standing there next to some of the landlords and agents that I've been dealing with who are going to be getting the escalator now. Today, Ben's on his way to help some tenants who say their property has a rat problem and is without heating and hot water. The owner of the property, we've had a few run-ins uh, with, and she's been a bit unpleasant. In London, this is an increasingly common scenario, a house of multiple occupation, or HMO. A normal four-bedroom house has been carved up into seven bedrooms, housing as many as 12 tenants. Hello, Julius. Hello, Kelly. All of whom share three bathrooms and three kitchens. You have a look in there. It's empty. This is, there's two girls in here, but we've got two bunk beds and a single bed all crammed into one room. And there's another guy there and another guy up there. There's no heat in, which is why I've got all this gear on. Uh, there's no hot water, and it's been like this for months. <laughs> Flavio Rubin, with his wife Kelly and their four-year-old son, 
pay £550 a month to squeeze into this one room. Yeah. It's just very, very cold here. The worst part in this situation is saw our son shaking when he's taking shower. The upshot is a load of people living in here, no heating, all paying rent and no one wants to fix it. London rent in 2015. Thanks, Flavio. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. The landlord is legally obliged to provide heating and hot water. To build a case against the landlord, Ben wants to talk to the other tenants. When they have a shower, when you imagine when you have a shower, all the water running down, it's on top of our foot, on top of our floor, on top of everywhere. We have to keep going down with the brass, take everything up, and it's you have to walk on water here. Miriam and Demetrius have recorded what happens when someone has a shower in the bathroom above them. That's not a leak, it's a little bit like that, drip, drip, drip. That thing's mental. Now this water coming for the plaque. The other day was the plaque was doing, what's the name? The electricity thing? Yeah, yeah, sparking, yeah, sparking. yeah, yeah. Because the water was going to the plaque and we cannot solve that. They keep, after uh, almost a year now, waiting for a year. Yeah. We have some rats as well, living underneath of our sink. And... Which we don't know where they're coming from, because we've never seen them in the house. So they're not coming, they're coming somehow from the outside. The next step for Ben is to confront the landlord over the property's condition and force them to make the repairs. They put up with a lot, as you can see. I could magic them out of there, I would. And at the same time, I'd bulldoze this f***ing house. In Hemel Hempstead, landlord Helen Miller is heading to court to try to win back possession of her flat. Her tenant, Sophia, hasn't paid rent since she moved in four and a half months ago and now owes her over £3,000. I do feel sick, nervous. I was dreaming last night about the flat and about this horrible woman. And, um, yeah, I can't pretend I'm, I'm looking forward to it at all. I'm just praying that she doesn't turn up and doesn't start, you know, saying ridiculous things. I just really, really just want my flat back now. Helen's worried that if she does turn up and make a counterclaim, she could be stuck with her nightmare tenant and no rent for many more months. The nerves stem from how much is resting on this. One judgment can make the difference between whether I get my flat back or not. And to me, it's important because I'm losing a lot of money and it isn't just the money anymore, it's the stress and the horrendous time I've had. Helen is being represented in court by advocate Stephen Seckley. Hello, Helen. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? Good, thank you, yes. Relaxed? Yeah. Good. Relaxed in your hands, I hope. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm ready. I'm sort of happy with all the paperwork. Um, I'm just thinking of the time that you ought to perhaps yeah. be, be getting Shall in. We? OK. Brilliant, thank you. OK. So, we will see what we will see. We will. Let's just hope she doesn't turn up. Luckily for Helen, Sophia doesn't turn up to make a defence, and the case is over in minutes. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> and she's finally won the possession order for her flat. <laughs> well, that really went about as well, if actually not better, than we could have expected it to have gone. Hopefully, you're pleased you've got the possession order now. How's that feeling? Yeah, it feels great, really great. I'm just so relieved, so relieved. Despite not turning up, it seems tenant Sophia wasn't going to make it easy for Helen. She sent an email to the court making unpleasant accusations. To say that I physically abused her, I've never met the woman. How dare she say that I've done that? It's horrible, absolutely horrible, horrible it, it, woman. It simply says more about her than it does about you, and if these things were genuine, or she wanted them to be perceived as genuine, why didn't she go to the police? The judge obviously saw right through it. In, in this game, you have to be prepared for the 
the biggest lie you can anticipate and then stick 30% on top for the, a bigger lie than the one you could anticipate. Just can't quite believe how much I've had to go through. OK, thanks, Stephen. Bye-bye. I did give the lawyer a hug, yes. He said that was a first. <laughs> In the absence of my husband being here to hug, coming out of court, I hugged the lawyer. Uh, I don't think he minded too much. <laughs> I fell over the moon that I've got the order and, yeah, one up to justice, that's all I can say. Thank God, thank God. Within four to five weeks, she will be out of my property, whether that's physically removed or whether she walks. I don't care, as long as she's gone. Helen has her possession order and her tenant will go. But when? And will she have to pay for bailiffs to forcefully evict her? Only time will tell. In Lewisham, Ben Reeve Lewis from the council's housing team is investigating a rundown house of multiple occupancy with no heating or hot water. But the situation's taken a turn for the worse. One of the tenants, Flavio, says he feared that two men claiming to be builders were attempting to throw him and his family out the day before. Hi, Flavio, it's Ben. What happened the other night? They came to see him. Yeah. The door was closed and then he kicked the door. He really? broke Is that the... why that yeah. wood's gone? He kicked he the door? The lock. That split. Hi, Hello. Kelly. Hello. You all right? They came with some tools. This is legitimate builders, Why? apparently. They are not builders. They came here with metal bars with a, a sharp end, two bars you use to reinforce concrete. So they were armed as well? Yeah, very sharp weapon, if you want. My wife, she was shaking, and my, our son, he wake up, and he start to cry, and then the, the situation is getting worse. You don't want a child to see men coming around and kicking the door in, do you? You've got families in there who are suffering. Two men turn up, kicking the door, scare the life out of a kid. Come on, what sort of human being are you? Forcibly evicting a tenant without a court order is illegal. It's time for Ben to get some answers. He's arranged to meet the landlord at the property. This is the, uh, the slab vest going in. Situations like this sometimes turn nasty, so Ben's not taking any chances. It's all going to be safe, but um, you never know. Take care. I'll Don't try. do anything I wouldn't do. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Two guys turned up at the front door with iron bars and they kicked the door in. Ben's organised a joint operation. Sean from Planning is worried about illegal multiple occupation. You know Chambers? Chamberlain from Environmental Health is worried about the freezing cold conditions and rats. The landlord and her partner turn up to face the music. It's against my privacy, no. please. Can you stop that, please? No, legally, legally. No, it's not. You haven't got a consent no, from me. No, you haven't we're not. Got okay, you're not allowed on uh, premises. She's not. She's not on the premises here. I'm going to have to go in. What troubles me is that the tenants upstairs have told me that when your builder arrived. They actually kicked the door in. It was very intimidating no, for them. No, no, you no, wouldn't no, normally no, get that no, from the builders. That's, that's a lie. I did bring the workmen here, right, to do uh, mm. the gas, uh, the doors, and all that. The workmen were sorry, harassed by one this. of those, and apparently they called the police. Yeah. The top unit, at the moment, there's seven people in there, planning wise, but look at that as a change of use. That's done without her knowledge. I would never have that was done without her knowledge. Was the, was the, the landlord is insisting one of her tenants has been subletting the other rooms, unbeknownst to her and he's to blame for the property's poor state. Oh, he was your tenant? Yeah, that's what I have a tenancy agreement with. The, 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 the problem, I am the victim The here. problem you've and got... She hasn't received uh, a rent from him since June. With respect, what you've told us sounds credible, but we've got no proof of it. Responsibility-wise, as unpalatable it is, legally speaking, you would be responsible for what's happening in here. I hope he's not on... If he's on a public domain, I will come to you. By blaming the rogue tenant, the landlord is attempting to duck all responsibility. She has a very plausible story. It kind of fits together quite well. Got no proof that it's true. And I dare say, if we get, I get the agent in, he's going to say something different. Just as Ben is about to leave, 
Lieutenant Dimitrios arrives home from work and casts serious doubts on the landlord's story. What she said to me is that he rented this property off of her and then without her knowing, he put all you people in it and he's not paying any money to her. It's a common scam. Uh, she rents to him, he rents to someone the else. The guy who is with here, I don't know if your husband or not. Yeah. I knew I've seen the guy before. He's the guy who gave us the keys to move in. When is like, I want and to And the show story you falls house. apart. Yeah. They were together when they opened the door for me. Thanks right. for telling me, yeah. Demetrius. Yeah, see you later. Yeah. Bye. Well, I feel such a plum. No, I don't really. <laughs> All of that bullshit that she said, the story fell apart within 30 seconds. <laughs> but I'll need some sort of legislation to throw at them if I'm going to do it. That's the thing. Ben Reeve Lewis of Lewisham's Rogue Landlord Unit is investigating an HMO, or House of Multiple Occupancy. With the house in poor condition, and with the landlord so far failing to make any improvements, Ben's helping the tenants find new homes. How's the um, search for property going? I found uh, one property. Really? It's um, 950, I think. Okay. Well, a that... two-bedroom flat. Yeah. Now, that's affordable, isn't it? I mean, do you actually want this place? Just, yeah? OK. Through his contacts, Ben's also helping Dimitrios and Miriam, who, with son Noah, are finally now able to move out of the freezing cold, rat-infested flat. No more bangings from upstairs, no more problems with the landlords, everything perfect with the contacts. No more animal friends? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, amazing. We are super happy. Super happy. Yeah, yeah, we make it. Their new place is in a leafy part of South London. It's our living room. Wow, huge. A special future is our garden. This is a special look. We love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Noah and his friend do most of the heavy lifting, the beginning of a very happy, very happy life. The couple toast to a better future. <laughs> the landlord claims she let the property to another tenant who sublet it without her knowledge. She claims that she attempted to carry out repairs, but has been denied access on every occasion. She denies trying to illegally evict anyone and claims she has not received rent since June 2014. It's 15 days since Helen Miller won a court order giving her back possession of her flat. Owing over £3,000 in unpaid rent, her tenant was ordered by the court to leave the property by now. Helen's on her way to see if she's complied. Her possession order expired yesterday. Um, I don't expect her to be gone. She won't be gone, obviously. Um, she owes me £4,000 in rent and legal fees. She owes Terry Sartin £8,000. I don't suppose she's going to do me any favours and leave my property now, but um, if she did, it would save me another two months of, um, of waiting for bailiffs. But I, I don't expect her to, to be gone at all. That would, that would be very un -Sophia. If Sophia is still living here, Helen will have to apply for bailiffs to evict her. This will mean further weeks of lost rent and stress. So from the outside, it's impossible to see whether she's left, but um, I can still live in hope. I was having nightmares last night. She just is really unpleasant. so fast, I just so want her to be gone. Oh my God, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone.
Sorry. <laughs> Didn't think she'd be gone. I thought she'd still be here. Finally, a remote ounce of decency from Norman. She's actually left when she was supposed to. Oh, dear God. Thank you. <laughs> I thought I was looking at another four to eight weeks waiting for the bailiffs to come and evict her. So glad. Let's have a look. Just needs a jolly good clean. It's not trashed, but it's dirty. Um, she hasn't cleaned anything. Oh, look, there's a pound. Oh, Woohoo! 3,149 pounds that you owe me, Sophia. Thank you for the pound. She's even cleaned the hob. So all I've got to do, basically, is dump all the food and get a locksmith. I wonder if I can get a locksmith now. Now, I wonder if you can help me. I'm the landlady of a property. I need the locks changed tonight. OK, not to worry. Thanks ever so much for your help. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Hi, is that lock around the clock? All right, see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. New lock. Oh, your star. Here's the keys. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Right, much appreciated. Take Thank care. You, Have please. a good see evening. You. Bye. So relieved. So relieved. So, start a new chapter. I can't tell you how much I need a new chapter right now. Well, my son's going to be a year old next month, and it's gone so quickly because I've spent six months of his life completely obsessed about what she's doing and where she is and what she's not paying and court cases and solicitors and legal fees. And you know, it's pretty much taken over how I've been thinking and how I've been. And I feel really sad that, you know, six months of his life, mum has been a bit distracted. But like I say, new chapter now. She's gone. For first time landlord Helen, it's been a baptism of fire. She's endured months of stress and is over £3,000 out of pocket. But at least with her property back, she can start to put it all behind her. With a tenant who's not paying their rent is always stressful. When that tenant also becomes abusive, the nightmare really begins. Like many pensioners, 70-year-old Joan Chadwick was supplementing her pension by renting out another property. But a year ago, her tenant stopped paying her rent. Since then, their relationship has gone from bad to worse. After I gave him his three months notice, uh, the text messages started. Very abusive. Um, saying things about my husband, propositioning his wife. And I have to say, even more embarrassing is offering, suggesting endlessly that he'll take me to a hotel and give me what I deserve. Still owing over £2,000, the tenant is due to be evicted in two days' time. But he's making a last-minute attempt to stay put. So she's called an eviction specialist, Chris Sharp, for help. We are going to Leeds County Court today. The tenant's trying to get the bailiff appointment to be cancelled, and that's the crux. They do it nine times out of ten simply to buy more time. Joan's tenant, Keith Hall Carter, and his lawyer arrive at court. It's his second attempt to halt the eviction, and he's back today making exactly the same allegations as before. 
landlords can face multiple applications by tenants to buy more time. He has used the system to frustrate and thwart the landlord's right to possession. But what's incredible about this case is he was once a family friend. We've known him 10 years. We had a place in Mallorca and he went with his family twice, completely free. I do feel really, really stressed and upset and something I just don't want in my life. Luckily for Joan, it takes just 10 minutes for the judge to throw the case out. Joan, I've got some great news. The bailiff will be going ahead in two days' time on Thursday. I'm delighted. Right. It's just good that the line has now been drawn and Joan will be getting her property back on Thursday. Two days' time. Great result. It looks like time's running out for Joan's tenant. But until he's out and the locks are changed, her nightmare is far from over. For every nightmare tenant who's not paying the rent, there's an unscrupulous landlord making good money out of slum dwellings. In Lewisham, South East London, Ben Reeve Lewis leads a specialist council unit tasked with rooting these rogue landlords out. When I'm driving along in this car with my wife, she just sees three bedroom houses, but I can't go anywhere without knowing that that's a, a cannabis farm or that's a money launderer, drug dealer, brothel. You'd be amazed at what goes on behind those doors. Today, Ben is on his way to see a tenant who's living in slum conditions. For five years, NHS nurse Lola Agbaji has been living with her seven-year-old daughter, Destiny, in this dilapidated flat above a takeaway. What are things that you don't like about this flat? That's the easiest part. <laughs> huh? Definitely, because it makes me sick. Have you been not well living here? I've been vomiting, itching my eye, sneezing, having breathing problem, and hum. Lola claims the flat was in a poor condition when they moved in five years ago. With nowhere else to go, she agreed to take it while the place was fixed up. But nothing has been done. This is where the water comes in. Any time it rains, all water flood in. Conditions have got so bad that Ben's team has now deemed the apartment unfit for human habitation. It isn't just the damp, the flat is downright dangerous. Comes through there, all the electricity goes off. Can't count how many times we've had firefighters in this building. This house is not safe. In an attempt to force the landlord to improve the property, 18 months ago, Lola stopped paying rent, but to no avail. Tomorrow morning, she and Destiny are being evicted. Ben arrives to see if there's anything he can do. Hello, Lola. Have you got the bailiff's notice? Yeah. Thank you. You say it's due for tomorrow, the, the eviction date, yeah? This looks to be the full ticket. This is a, a bailiff's warrant. This is what they look like. 11.30 tomorrow, which is 24 hours, exactly. Yeah, the locks get changed and she's on the street with her kid. With ever more people squeezed out of the property market, the number of tenants renting from private landlords has ballooned. But out of the shadows, a new band of slum landlords has emerged. Can you tell me the situation that's happened? 
Ben Reeve Lewis comes to the aid of tenants in substandard housing. Tenants like Lola and her seven year old daughter, Destiny. Look at this. This is. Jesus Christ, this floor is going. I'm standing on that. As well as damp and crumbling floorboards, Lola's home is also infested with insects. These are what I call them bed bugs that my mummy pressed. The black spots. That's what I say. They come up here and they hide, then they fall off and then they bite us. It's everywhere. If you check the bed sheets, there's blood here. She goes to school with bug, box bites all over her face. It's like she's getting used to it, box now, because she has to wake up in the night to kill them. You know, I feel she, she doesn't deserve it. Even me as an adult, I know I don't, but as a child, she just doesn't need to grow in this kind of situation. And we have that bug spray that smells to spray the bugs to get them away. <laughs> this is why I do this job. It's what makes me angry, is that there's some human being out there and they think it's acceptable for someone to live in a property like this. Just provide habitable properties for other human beings. Jesus. Just relax. Leave it with me. Thank you. See you in a bit. Although the flat's condition is appalling, Lola and Destiny have nowhere else to go. And now they're being evicted. Ben has less than 24 hours to find them somewhere else to live, or else they'll be out on the streets. I just think we have to send up a signal flare, or tap someone on the shoulder and say, excuse me, 11.30 tomorrow. <laughs> At the moment, she's facing street homelessness, unless I can get someone to uh, get on it. She's constantly asking me questions. Are we going to be homeless? I, I don't know how to explain to a six year old, seven year old girl that we're going to be homeless. Sometimes she keeps telling mommy, please don't make me change school. I'm so scared. I don't want to leave my friends. You know, I put her into this world and I don't want to bring her into this world to suffer, make me feel guilty for what she's going through. Do, do you feel guilty about this thing? Sometimes I do. Ian Mantle. Right. I don't know the names of anyone else in the team. Um, Maybe I'm not doing something right. That's why this is like this. Oh, God knows I've tried my best. His old numbers on it. Oh, and the emails? Yeah. <sighs> the 11.30 tomorrow, she's on the street. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a bailiff's warrant. It's all pucker. I'm here, waiting for his go. I won't go home until I've got it. With less than an hour before the offices close, Ben seems to have worked a miracle. He's found Lola and Destiny temporary accommodation. They will pick her up tomorrow, which is a good thing. <laughs> sort of good news. It's tempered with a bit of bad news. When the bailiffs come tomorrow, they'll find somewhere for you. So you're not going to be on the street. I oh, know, I know, I know. Thank you so much. But the only the, the, what we've got to be careful of is we don't know because it's such an emergency thing. No one knows where you're going to be yet. Yeah. It's an emergency, so it could be anywhere. But do you want me to keep my girl with me tomorrow? I would. Yeah, yeah. Don't send her to school because you don't know where you're going to end up yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A day off school? 
and you're complaining. She loves going to school. Oh my she God. <laughs> Strange child you are. You go, you go somewhere next to me, okay? Yeah, you're going to have a, a while of kind of things being up in the air, you're not really going to know what's going to go on, but nothing lasts forever, it will settle down. Something good has come out of it. I really appreciate it. That's all right. At least you're giving us hope. Yeah. At least, at least for that tomorrow, it's, there's hope for her. So That's all Thank right. you so much. I just had to slip him a brown envelope. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's done. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, Lola. Oh, yeah? Evan, thank you Cheers. so much. Bye, then. Bye, bye. <laughs> she took the bad news element of it well. It's quite philosophical. Um, but, yeah, hopefully. I mean, I don't know how pleased she's going to be tomorrow when they find out where she is. I'm going to take this pink one, this pink one, and I'm going to take this teddy bear. Her daughter really likes that school she's in, and the fact is her sort of daughter might have to leave schools, to change schools, we just don't know. My dream place will be like having a garden with a castle in there and a slide, and my own bedroom in the classroom so I can sleep down all night. And hmm, another room, another room with another playhouse, and I can have a bedroom in there so I can sleep there all night. <laughs> As long as we've got a roof over our head, that's the most important thing. You're gonna be fine, all right? I promise you. I try all my best. I'm really trying, you know that. Hmm? Just for some time. One in five British homes is now owned by a private landlord. Many are pensioners who use the rent to top up their pensions. People like Joan Chadwick. After her tenant stopped paying her rent a year ago, Joan won a court order to evict him. And today's the big day. But for eviction specialist Chris Sharp, it seems the tenant's not going quietly. So the tenant's called you about nine or ten times already? He's been harassing you for more time. OK, bye, Joe. Bye. Here we are, 30 minutes before the bailiff turns up, he's still calling Joan, saying, I want more time. How can you live with yourself? I've got a daughter who's 16. I mean, people have to start to look in the mirror at some point and realise that nobody else is to blame other than their reflection. Despite the tenant's best attempts, the eviction will go ahead. The locksmith and the bailiffs arrive. Hi, guys. Good morning. Chris. Yeah. Hopefully, we're going to go peacefully. Yeah. That's the best way, isn't it? Oh, God, yes. OK. Have we indicated how much time he's going to need right now? I think about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Right, Mr. Hall Carter is very unhappy about the prospect of being filmed um, and is refusing to leave whilst the cameras were here. So I regret that on the basis of so I can actually execute the warrant, I would ask to withdraw the cameras. This is just a, a regular warrant and there's no conditions on it. He's not paying any rent here. He's, he's, he's now calling the shots again. As far as this warrant's concerned, it has to be executed, notwithstanding Who's here? I mean, you can't call the shots on a warrant. This is a, this is a, this is HMCT. This is this is a court. This is a court warrant which has to be executed. The bailiffs make a second attempt to get the tenant out. He is refusing to leave. Yes. I'll have no choice but to call the police. He's now saying to the bailiffs, he's not going. He's making other excuses to why he doesn't want to leave. The bailiff manager for the Leeds and Wakefield County Courts. I'm currently um, trying to enforce a warrant of possession. The occupant is refusing to leave the property, so I am requesting police assistance to enforce the warrant. 
It's now approximately 12 o'clock noon. I think he's with his daughter. Go, you know, trust him. It seems the threat of the police turning up has done the trick. The tenant and his daughter finally leave without any of their possessions. Martin, is that a result? Are they, uh, are we able to go ahead now? I'm just going to, what I'll do is if I can just ring the police and then I'll have a check around the house. Um, it's reference log number 540. This is how it's been it's left. to um, call it off. The occupants who are refusing to leave have left of their own accord. We no longer need police support. Hello? You all clear, Luke? Yeah, all clear. Oh, Everything looks clear. Yes. Toothpaste, all the torches are still there. No effort to clear out. With the tenant gone, landlord Joan finally feels able to return to her property. Hi, Joan. Thank you, thank you. Thank Went you. almost to plan. He stuck in a little bit. Yeah. But the bailiffs were fantastic. Good. Big. Let's go into the house. OK, thank you. It's not damaged. That's the main thing. Yeah. Mess can be tidied up, can't it? Yes. The, there's no structural damage that we've seen. But you can see they've left in a hurry because they've just left it as it, as it is. They really weren't expecting, no, despite know. the bailiffs telling them they're coming round. I know, they, I know. They will have a right to their gear. Yes. Arrange to have their stuff given back to them by arrangement and appointments only. But do not let them in. Because if you let them back in, yes. you could be faced then with a trespass action if they do not then leave. Thank right you then, so Joe. Much, Chris. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. <clears throat> Joan is down £4,000 in unpaid rent and court fees, but still the nightmare isn't over. How you could not pay your rent, I mean, is ridiculous. I would love to not pay our mortgage, but I don't think we'd be staying there very long, and, and likewise everyone else in the real world. So... This has took ten months, two visits to courts, huge expense. So, yeah, a bit, uh, bit of a nightmare, really. But we'll manage, we'll get it done. Every day, over a hundred tenants are evicted from their homes. Some are victims of rogue landlords, but others are nightmare tenants who make their landlord's life a misery. The Bytelet battlefield has bred a new breed of eviction specialists, people like Paul Champlina, who runs Landlord Action. I've done this job for 15 years. We've dealt with over 32,000 instructions. I still get shocked. There's still stuff that happens, you know. If I didn't get shocked, then I wouldn't be doing my job properly, really. Paul Champlain of Landlord Action. Paul has just taken a call from a new client in a desperate situation. Okay, so recently my father passed away. About five and a half years ago, he had someone move in with him. This person has been living there ever since. I'm aware of this tenant being asked to leave twice, right. but he still hasn't left. Right. He claims that he's a tenant. He claims that he doesn't have the paperwork and that he was paying my father in cash. So there's no trace that he was actually paying. We could serve a letter to apply a bit of pressure mm -hmm. to see if, if help make this chap leave the property sooner rather than later, rather than him just draw, drawing it out. Right. Bye. Bye. Right, so hopefully we can help this uh, Amit out and uh, get his father's flat back for him. So you can imagine uh, the stress that the family are under. Father of two, Amit Patel, has been handling his father's estate since he passed away one month ago. 
but it seems the problems with his father's tenant began long before his death. He has been living at the property since 2009, but Amit thinks the circumstances are suspicious. He can't produce a tenancy agreement. I have no paperwork showing any tenancy agreements. With regards to rent, he claimed to be paying by cash, so there's no trail on that money. So if we're talking about £350 per month for five years, it's about £20,000. The tenant admits to paying in cash, but claims the receipt stopped six years ago because he and Amit's father became such good friends. Amit's family apparently asked the tenant to leave on two occasions, but he remained. Amit finally confronted him at his dad's funeral. Eventually, when we did agree a day for me to go over to collect rent, he said he didn't have the money. To have him stand there in what is now my property and tell me he wasn't going to pay me anything, I was, I was furious. All I wanted at this point was to him to get out. Amit's father was once a successful businessman, running a string of fast food restaurants in America. But his business and then his marriage collapsed, and he hit the bottle. So my father had alcohol problems, and that's also the reason why we didn't have a relationship. Uh, we hadn't spoken for about 12 years. And even though we might not have had a relationship, it, it angers me that someone like this could do that. It's 7 a.m. and Paul and Amit arrive at Amit's dad's flat in North London to hand deliver a letter saying the tenant must move out by midday tomorrow. Yeah. That's what we discussed. I've got the letter. Okay. Yeah, but the main thing is we're going to get vacant possession. Yes. So hopefully he is going to leave and I think this added pressure might work. Um, hopefully he will leave. OK, let's go. Great. Paul often arrives early to serve papers, hoping to catch the tenants at the property. I just hope he's in. Which one is it? It's the upper floor. Right oh, it's up maze, isn't it? Yeah. It's that door straight ahead. This one? Yeah. He could be looking out the curtains and thinking, what the hell is going on here? Where's the curtains? That's uh, the one up here, that one there. That's his room. This one here? Yeah. See where the curtains move. Can you, can you knock on the door again? I want to see if the curtains move. I won't get no joy. Shoot. OK. No, all I'm going to do is leave the letter here, Abbott, you know? OK, yeah. That's all I can do. No, no, I understand. So I want to put this through the letterbox. OK, so he's got, he's got the letter. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hope that he... he uh... Despite their early morning tactics, the tenant is nowhere to be seen. That was disappointing. Yeah, the main thing is we're going to get possession. Yeah. I'm disappointed, didn't get to see him at the door. Um, I was really looking forward to having him there, serving the notice. In just over 24 hours, Amit will find out if he's finally managed to get rid of the tenant. On the other side of London, today's the day Lola and her daughter are set to be evicted. Parkinson's is the last night till about midnight this morning. You can say I literally had about four hours sleep. I woke up six o'clock again to start parking. They've lived in this dilapidated flat for five years. Lola stopped paying the rent in the hope that the landlord would sort it out. But now they're being kicked out. What to kick? My school uniform or four trousers, three dresses. And I think that's, and some shoes. I'm on my teddies. 
that's it. It's 11.30 a.m. and Council Officer Ben turns up for Lola's eviction. A man claiming to be the letting agent has arrived and things are kicking off. You are my landlord. I know you are the one. You are my landlord. You can't deny Lola, it. Lola, calm down. I'm waiting for this moment to give yeah. you my peace of mind. Tell me you've given me help. I didn't get it. Look at the state of the house. You've been collecting money from me and you're telling me you've given me help. Don't go anywhere. Video is fake. Don't let him escape. You don't know. Don't run away. Lola, calm down. Calm down. No, no, no. No, look, I have for police assistance because she was getting a bit we too aggressive for place. me. Five years I've been wanting to see my landlord. You don't allow me. Five years I've lived there. I don't know who you are. You're telling me I'm aggressive. Maybe you should go to where I go to with a child and you know what? I'm not aggressive. Five years. I have run for police. Worried the situation is getting out of hand, the bailiffs call the police for backup. There's a child in the property. Yes, yeah, she's distressed. She has always been distressed. Always been distressed because of the situation of this house. She's never had a good sleep in this house just because of the condition of the house. So tell me why she would be distressed. She's got respiratory problem because of this situation too. You're telling me something else. I should know I'm aggressive. Why are you hiding? You know you are, you know you've done something wrong. I know you are my landlord and I've been wanting to see you for the past over five years. You've been denying. You are abusing. I'm not abusing. Come back here. Don't run away. Come back. This is not acceptable. I've got the bailiff for she hasn't paid for the last 18 months any rent. So what do you expect from a landlord and a managing agent to do? To yeah. be honest, I can't see her wanting to move back in. But you see what a shithole there is, you know. She's all right, she's always good. She's cool. She hasn't seen the landlord for five years. When he turns up, she just vented at him, and that's what the baby is. Understandably, yeah. Understandable. Mm. For seven-year-old Destiny, it's all too much. Oh, okay. Hey. I've not done anything wrong in what I've said to him because I have been waiting for, for this moment to send my mind out to him. Me, the way you treated us like a animal, as if we are not human beings. What you've got to go through now is a fairly lengthy process. There'll be a lot of waiting around, yeah? So stay calm, because Destiny has an upset set today. I'm sure no. she's seen you like it before. But... No, she's never. Never. She normally calm, Destiny. She's normally. Yeah, but she must be really upset. Yeah. All right, bye-bye to the dumping ground. <laughs> It's a dumping ground, Destiny. Mommy, you know what a dumping ground is? It looks like a dumping ground, Destiny. I'm so happy I've done this. I feel so a lot relieved. I'm not. The stress is... I'm so sorry, Destiny. I have to. I have to react that way. I've never been like that, but I just had to. Over five years, I've bottled it up, and I just couldn't wait to say it out. OK? Thank you, darling. I'm so sorry, huh? Another day, another dollar. But hopefully, Today is the start of a new life in a better home for Lola and Destiny. It's been one month since Amit Patel's dad died. Despite several attempts to get his father's tenant out, he still hasn't left the property. But the problems don't seem to end there. Digging through his father's finances, Amit's discovered huge amounts of money going from his father to the tenant. These are my father's bank statements, and I can see online transactions. Money has been withdrawn, and the reference name is the tenant. There's two, three, four transactions a day, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, a single day. So. There are multiple amounts. They start at 100 pounds. The largest one goes to about 8,000 pounds. It's about four months it goes on. 
So far, I've calculated it's about 117,000 pounds. The more I dug into it, the more angry I got. It's the day the tenant is due to leave. Amit and Paul Champlina are heading to the property. As well as getting his flat back, Amit's hoping to get some answers about his father's suspicious finances. This is going to be my opportunity to present some of the evidence that I've gathered against him. So I've got my father's accounts with me, which has his name all over it. So I do plan on asking him about that, because I'm not sure whether, what other opportunity I'll get to do that. You've got here on the 7th of December, six grand in one day. And then it just starts going overdrawn. Yeah. And you only found out about this after your father passed away. Yeah. He'd never, ever mentioned anything to you. No, because we didn't. No. We were never spoken about it, so... Right, right, right. Because of his alcohol and stuff like that. Yeah. That's a shame. The car's right there, so... Oh, really? He's car? Which car is that? He's parked right outside, so... Amit spots the tenant's car. Which car is that? It's an Audi. Lovely. With any luck, he's there. Moving stuff out. Hello? Yeah. Hi, I'm from Landlord Action and with Amit. Yeah. Are you leaving now, yeah? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. We'll just come oh. in and do a quick walk around. Yeah, we'll have a quick yeah. check, check the property's okay. We're a law firm, we've helped Mr. Amit. Okay. <coughs> Let's do yeah. this. It's absolutely stinks. This is how he lives. Have you moved all your stuff out? Uh, yes. Where's the meter? One meter right in the corner there. In that. In part. here? Yeah. If you open the other gate uh, door as well, this one. It's a bit of a state, isn't it? Yeah. It's locked. Right, OK, fine. Okay. And this meter's outside, I'll show you. OK. So, I know what that's, that is. That's uh, fine. I'd get around the back. Okay. Yeah, OK. And, and what about, uh, allegedly, about all the money and stuff? Amit asked the tenant some tricky questions about his father's money. He admits that it is his name on the account, but says the police investigated and took it no further. Let me see where all this went to, because there's other other bank accounts as well, which okay. I'm having investigated. Okay. So we'll see where all that's gone right. to. Well, I think we're done here. OK, so have you got everything? I've got everything that I need. OK, so now you're surrendering the property. Yep. It's all this in. Yep. OK, lovely, okay. great. OK. I'm glad I got to question him why his name appears multiple times on my father's accounts. It was a case of, I don't know, when I asked him. Um, I guess he wasn't prepared for me to ask him about that, uh, but yeah, and then he went on to explain how he had already been questioned about this, and he received a letter from the police saying that um, it wasn't going to be taken any further. The reason why it wasn't taken forward was because my father had withdrawn from the complaint. The tenant claims it was the family, not Amit's father, who started legal proceedings against him. With Paul's help, Amit has got his father's house back. Looks like a life insurance policy. But he may never get to the bottom of what happened to his father's money. Police action, I know it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Because you've got the lack of proof. Mm -hmm. You've unraveled something, you didn't know it was there. Yeah. There's a lot more digging into A lot more to you know. go through yet, but yeah. this is the first step at least, and he's this, out now. And This is the main step. Paul, thanks. Okay. Thanks a Pleasure. lot. I appreciate it. Good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you very All much. Right. Thanks. Speak to you soon. Bye, Emmett. Yeah. Bye. So, property's back in my hands now. I've got the keys, the only set of keys, and there's no way he's coming back in. It's all done. It's dusted. The rest now is just how far I pursue everything else. It's been seven days since landlord Joan Chadwick evicted her nightmare tenant. The hardest aspect is the emotional drain that it takes. It sort of knocks the stuffing out of me when people don't behave 
as I would regard as normally. Although Joan got her property back, her tenant left without any of his belongings, and she's had to pay to have them cleared out. He was due to collect his stuff today at 9 a.m., but once again, things aren't going quite as planned. I think it's probably best we wait for a bit longer and uh, in, in the hope that he comes in, uh, gets his stuff and just leaves you. It's almost two o'clock and there's still no sign of the tenant. OK, OK, we'll wait. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. It's now quarter to two in the afternoon, some four or five hours after they should have been here. But just as Chris is about to give up hope... I think they might be here now. ..the removal guys arrive. This is the Aladdin's cave. You've got all this gear going into that Luton van. Some gloves in van. <laughs> and finally, the tenant shows up. Why are you recording me? Why are you recording me? They're coming back on the property now, but we've got no right to. Chris needs to make sure they don't go back into the property. It's not unknown for evicted tenants to claim squatters' rights. It's a broken one. Yeah. yeah. Just leave it by the bins. Don't, yeah. no, under any circumstances. I would desperately have to sit in the car and go back in. have got instructions today to allow them into the garage and clear the garage into the van. Yeah, certainly. Legally bound to tell you that if there is anything missing or stolen, my solicitor, that charges will be brought against you. I, that's entirely your prerogative, absolutely. Jones Cleaner is at the property to oversee things. What? And gets caught in the crossfire. What the hell are you at? It's still in the house. I'm going to go now. Oh, kicking up on there. Yeah, get out of the house. Are you all right? Don't sit in the car. Oh, all right, I'll shout at you, weren't they? Yeah. Not very nice. Don't just don't rise to it. Just just yeah. people kick out at this point, don't they? They've realised they can't do anything about it. Finally, the tenant's belongings are driven off, and it's the end of the road for Joan's tenant. Despite the court ruling, tenant Keith Hall Carter disputes the fact he owes Joan any rent and has made a complaint about damaged and missing items. In London, it looks like new beginnings for another landlord. Two months have passed since Amit Patel got rid of the nightmare tenant, and he's been busy. We've removed everything that was here before. We've repainted all the walls, completely different to what it was. It looks livable now, yeah. Just redid all the ceiling, the light fixtures. Uh, in this room, we've just removed everything that was in here. So this room has just been completely redone, tiled from top to bottom. Again, completely different room. And we've had some estate agents come in. We've put it on the market now, so it's, it's, it's on for sale. But to get it to this stage and ready to be sold feels very good. And now I just need to get it sold and we can move on. When it comes to Amit's suspicions about his father's money, he's had to reconcile with probably never knowing the full story. There's not a lot I can do because my father's not here to, to corroborate anything. And he can pretty much say whatever he wants, so there's not much really I can do. If I had the opportunity, I would pursue it as far as possible. But priority now is to, to sell this place off and move on really as fast as possible. It can take over and leave you frustrated at the end of it, which I don't really want to be anymore now, so. 
In response to these allegations, the tenant claims that as Amit's father had little contact with his family, he decided to spend the money on enjoying himself. The tenant claims it was the family, not Amit's father, who asked him to leave. He also claims Amit's father transferred the money and asked him to spend it on things he and the tenant wanted.